Good morning. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dane and I'm converting this Renault Master van into a tiny home office on wheels. And today I have a bit of a puzzle to solve. Let's jump in the van. Let me show you what, what's happening here. I need to try and fit all of that electrical gear in that small electrical cabinet which is going to sit underneath the bed bench seat. So it's a bit of Tetris. Uh, what I have here is 3000 watt inverter, have a DC DC charger and MPPT solar charger, got a master disconnect switch, solar isolator, various circuit breakers and fuses, some bus bars, and some 12 volt fuse panels. So I think today is going to be a lot of sitting and looking at this and imagining how everything will lay out, lay it out a few different ways and figure out exactly how it's going to work without the wiring becoming a complete mess. Good morning. We're back. It's a new day and I'm continuing with the electrical setup in my van here. Let me show you where we're up to because I don't think I filmed quite a bit of what I've done so far. I think I showed the layout that I was considering, but not the actual outcome. So here is what I've got done so far. <clears throat> so I have this uh, thick cable that is going to connect from the battery to the electrical circuit and to the inverter. So I have been cutting, stripping, crimping, and then taping to connect these thick cables and figuring out the right lengths that I need. But that is all connected now to the fuses, go to the bus bars and to the inverter. Last thing I need to do is one more piece, which I had to order another meter of because my calculations were off. Uh, then this is going to be the ground to the chassis. So I need to do one more length up. I'm gonna leave it at the full length so I have as much flexibility as I, as I can possibly have. And worst case scenario, if I find I need some more and I've got too much there, I could cut it and uh, make two pieces out of it. I also have one sh small length of spare cable there. This is the last length of the thick cable, which means the rest should be a lot easier to cut, strip, crimp, and seal. So, yeah, I'm going to do that now, and then... I need to figure out um, how and when and what needs to happen to before I can actually install both the bed bench seat and the this electrical board in the van because once it goes in it's pretty much locked in there and it will be a hassle to get out. So I need to double check what needs to be done before doing that and I'll probably jump onto those tasks as well today. So because I don't need to cut this length of cable, I just need to strip it back. It's a lot easier than, uh, than having to measure the length and then cut with these cable shears or cable cutters. So I just measure the lugs on the length of cable and mark how long I need to strip back. And then just cut the insulation through. It's quite
quite difficult to manage with this thick cable because it kind of has its a mind of its own as it wants to rotate around and the weight behind it. Um, yeah, there's probably a, a trick to it, which I haven't worked out as yet. So this cable actually has double insulation. So I cut through the orange colored insulation and then I end up at some more, which makes it also a bit difficult to figure out. Okay, so that is the orange off. And then we need to cut through the white making sure we don't cut through the actual copper. The other thing that's difficult with this thick cable is getting the lugs on the end. So we've come up with a bit of a small trick where we cut this inner insulation. There's probably a, a proper way of doing this, but we cut the inner insulation and leave a little ring that we can kind of use to help pull the strands of copper together and yeah I wouldn't be surprised if there's a a better technique for doing this so there we have the orange and the white removed from the top and then what I can do if I've cut through this piece properly is pull this white bit up to the top take the lug and it should fit over all of the strands and then I can push it down and then cut this remaining white piece off and that makes sure that all of the strands of copper are contained inside the lug. So yeah, if you know of a better way to do that, um, drop it down in the comment section. Unfortunately, this is the last cable that I'm probably going to have to make out of this size. So it's unlikely it will help me, but it might help someone else or if I do have to come back and make another one of these, I will know. So there is the lug put on the end. Now we need to crimp it, which is a fun time. So let me try and take you outside to where, we do, where we're doing that. Okay, so we're out here in the garden where I'm using this crimping tool. Basically, we put the lug inside this kind of anvil and then use a mallet or a hammer to smash it down. So we put it in there like that, hold it all together and give it a good whack. And then we're crimped. Next thing to do, we can go back inside. So the next thing to do is seal this up. Now I've been using electrical tape, which all the information that I've looked up says um, that that's not adequate. So I will be sourcing some um, 
some heat shrink. I just haven't found the right size that will actually fit this cable and cable lug. So bear with me on that. But for now, I'm gonna use electrical tape. This is gonna be a ground, so I'm gonna use the black tape. So I'll basically just take this black electrical tape and wrap it around the cable and the cable lug to seal it off for the time being. For some reason they only had orange, orange cable of this thickness so I need to use coloured electrical tape to signify the, the different uh, cables that I'm making. And that is one end done and ready to attach wherever I need to attach it. So I'll go do the other end and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, so to finalize installing the bed, bench seat and the electrical board, etc., I need to put the walls on. In order to put the walls on, I need to insulate the rest of the ceiling that I've been um, putting off for a long time. So I'm going to do that now and then probably prepare the walls, get them on, then the bench seat and electrical board will go in and then we can finish the wiring. I think that's the order that it's going to be, but we'll see. So basically I have to uh, wrap this thin insulation around all of the roof ribs so I just need to cut I've got one I need two more of this size and length Okay, now I've got those three strips of insulation I need to clean and then add the, uh, the adhesive to the ribs and then just stick them up.
Okay, just a quick update of where we're at now. What I did yesterday was I started applying the second lining of ins insulation, uh, of this lining here. So I've done that to this middle section and the back, and then I need to do this one today, just here. The front will wait until bathroom's done, and then if you don't remember from right at the beginning, this is what the uh, wall panels that came with the van look like. And over here we have painting station. So there's one there, undercoat that we did yesterday, and the other one, and a couple more just there. So today I'll be applying the top coat and uh, hopefully finishing off this second part of the insulation here and probably fixing up this wall since I think that's about it that's needed before we can put the wall on. Okay, so before applying a coat of paint to the, uh, the bed bench seat, I'm going to have to do a little bit of sanding. So I've got this um, cordless multi-tool here and I'm going to sand both of these down so that we can then apply the undercoat and then the top coat on these. So I'm gonna do that now. It's a new day, and yes, second haircut of the project. Let me show you what we've got done so far. As you know, we've been painting and preparing the inside of the van for uh, the walls, and we actually have installed this wall on the driver's side. So this wall is attached. We have cables running behind, etc. We have the bed painted. It's not yet installed, so that is what I'm going to be working on today, is getting the bed or the bench seat um, spaced correctly uh, and preparing it for being attached to the floor and to the wall to hold it down because that is one of the steps that's in the way before we actually place the electrical 
uh, box in there with all the components. So that's where I'm up to now and potentially also today start on completing the wall on this side as well. Hey, how's it going? I'm back. I've been working quite a lot on the electrical for the van and let me show you where I'm at now. So here is the electrical, I guess, board that I've got set up with the solar charge controller and DC to DC charger on the end here. Some various circuit breakers, the on off switch, bus bars at the bottom there, some fuses. I have the solar isolator up the top here. And so I have various ways of being able to turn off each of the components in the electrical system. I've tested the solar charge controller and we are getting charge coming into the system from solar. So that's great. Let me go around and show you what I'm doing for the alternator charging, which is the DC to DC charger. So I have this cable here running from back over there behind the wall and up to another circuit breaker here. And then this cable and the negative cable go in and connect to the starter battery. So that is all connected correctly. The one thing I need to do now is connect the DC DC charger to the van's onboard uh, alternator because the alternator is a smart alternator and so we need to have the connection from the alternator to the charge controller so that it knows when to pull charge from the starter battery and so it will only pull charge when the car when the van is on so i need to figure out how to connect that at the same time as doing all of this, I've found that the van's like starter battery is slowly draining as I'm leaving it here. So I don't know why that is, and I'm going to have to figure that out as well. I have disconnected some of the electrical components, the standard van ones. So potentially, maybe I need to reconnect them and see if, uh, if a charge is being taken off there. So that's what I'm going to explore today. I've also got the brackets to mount down both the passenger side and the driver's side bed bench seats and potentially we'll do that today as well if I can figure out the electrical. So I'm going to jump in and do that now. Hello. So I've made a few more connections into the electrical system and we have hit a little bit of a milestone here so let me show you what is happening I have the Renogy I have the Renogy DC DC charger with MPPT aka the solar charger and the alternator charger here and <clears throat> we are we're getting some solar and it's charging my battery, my 400 amp battery that is over there. I've got the inverter connected here. And what we're going to do now is the inverter is actually turned off. Um, but I believe that we still get, uh, we can still get uh, DC power through this 5.2 amp USB port. So I'm going to plug it into my phone here, attempt to do this one-handed, which is not easy. There we go. And you can see it's now charging. And there's my two little puppies there. So we have power coming in from the solar. 
up on the roof. Can I give you a shot of the solar on the roof? I'm not sure. So we've got power coming in from the solar panels on the roof at the moment. Coming through the charge controller into the bus bar and coming out of the inverter. So big milestone right now. We now have power in the van. Now it's not fully, um, I guess, installed or mounted just yet. So I still have to do a little bit of that. But um, yeah, big milestone. And next thing to test is the AC power coming out of the inverter. And one more thing to show you, I'm not sure if you'll see very well on my iPhone here, but it says that we're getting 6.1 amps. It says that we're getting 6.1 amps coming in from the solar right now at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Or 5.6 um, in fact I am still charging here so we're drawing some and also getting 5.6 on top of that so if I disconnect my charger we should see that it comes up to 6.2 right now so we do have the capability of charging my 400 amp battery However, it will take a long time to fully recharge uh, at 6.2 amps, so that's why I have the alternator charging as well, so that it'll charge while driving. Uh, hopefully, during the day, the whatever uh, power that comes in from the solar will hopefully keep us, you know, just enough topped up, just enough to survive each day. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, the next thing to test is AC power coming out of the inverter. So I have a little power brick here with my USB iPhone charger plugged into it. The inverter is not turned on, so when I plug this in, we will see that it doesn't show that it's charging. It just stays black. However, when I turn the inverter on, we should see the iPhone come on and charge it. And we do. It is now charging. Hey, so it's another day working on the van. And I think last time I spoke to you, I was worried that I had a problem with the van's starter battery. Because I was trying to connect up the electrical system, specifically the, the alternator charger to the van starter battery and I was not having success also the van had <clears throat> uh, the battery had run dead so the van wouldn't start so I tried to jump it uh, got it started but the battery would not charge back up so I have gone and replaced the van's starter battery in here so I've gone and replaced the van starter battery with a new one and all is looking good. The electrical system is charging correctly from solar when it needs to or when it has sun and it is charging from the van starter battery while the van is running and only while the van is running. So. The electrical system is up and running correctly. We've got charge, we've got storage, and we have the inverter, which we were able to test a load on the battery. So time now, time now is to connect the 12 volt fuse panel, which is what I will be then running all of the 12 volt appliances off of. So lights, fridge, fans, um, USB charging ports, I think that's mostly it. So time's now to do that. 
Okay, so here is the 12 volt fuse panel, and that's going to be placed and that's going to be placed on the side of the electrical box here and there will be a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom to allow cables to come through and then connect onto the fuse panel and it has a cover that goes on top of it And so it have it has a cover that goes on top here so that will that will sit in there like that so I'm going to drill the holes so the cables can run through and then mount the fuse panel to the board and then we'll do some uh, wiring we'll add some lugs to it connect it to this and then we'll test it out Okay, we've been working hard today getting the 12 volt fuse panel connected as I mentioned earlier and let me show you what we've got so I've got the, the fuse panel connected here it's running through a circuit breaker and I have one appliance or one string of appliances connected there with a 10 amp fuse connected and so what have I got <clears throat> installed? Have a fan here. Still have some cleaning up to do of cables. But got a fan installed there. Also have connected the light that is attached to the, the skylight. So when the skylight's closed or at night time we can turn the light on here. And so there's the light, we can turn it off like so. <clears throat> fan, turn the fan on. It's got a few speeds, three speeds. It's running at full speed now, which is, <clears throat> is blowing some good air there. And I also have um, ready to be connected just here is the regular LED puck lights that will be going in the roof. So <clears throat> I'll be doing that next. I'll be installing a second fan and a second fuse panel on the other side of the van. So we'll be working on that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, and also to note the fan and the light that we just looked at, um, they are actually running directly off solar power. So here is my battery over here. It's not connected to the circuit at all. And everything is running right now off the solar panels today.